Some of the most incredible stories in life are the human stories that surround us every day. This is a story with humble roots that began two generations ago. In a matter of six years, Martin has been able to write his story, perhaps better fit for a fairy tale. This is the story of Martin Mays. This is Folk Tales. Logic would state that the best mountain bikers in the world would come from mountain towns. Strangely enough, the first part of this story takes us to the rolling hills of Belgium. Martin est né le 27 janvier 1997 et c'était un beau bébé, magnifique bébé. Et c'était un bébé qui avait vraiment besoin de beaucoup d'amour, beaucoup de tendresse. Donc il a bougé d'abord avec des petits trotteurs, il a bougé avec des, des, des petits vélos sans pédales. Et puis après il est venu lui-même au vélo, on lui a proposé d'autres choses, mais c'était le vélo qui, qui a pris le dessus. Quoi. Moi, je roulais, les enfants étaient petits, ils venaient juste voir les compétitions et voilà, ça leur a donné goût comme ça. I was, you know, always looking at him and I just truly wanted to do the same as him since like a very young age. Alors, euh, j'ai commencé en 1984 à rouler en, en BMX. J'ai fait une dizaine d'années de BMX. Probably my Patrick at the races. We all knew who he was because he's the fa one of the fastest guys, if not the fastest guy in Belgium, the guy to beat. Et donc voilà, en, en résumé, ben voilà, euh, des titres de champion de Belgique, une fois champion d'Europe de euh, dual slalom, et, et puis ben, le reste, beaucoup, beaucoup de satisfaction, beaucoup de, euh, de compétitions, plus de 500 compétitions d'ailleurs. Et donc voilà, en tout cas de très bons souvenirs. Ils ont suivi, et puis maintenant, bien sûr. Ils vont plus vite que moi, beaucoup plus vite que moi. <rire> oui, bah déjà, à partir du moment où tu es rentré euh, dans l'équipe Atherton, euh, c'était vraiment euh, pour nous euh, tellement euh, incroyable euh, de voir euh, une équipe de cette euh, dimension proposée à notre petit garçon qui n'était encore rien. Je me souviens que nous étions sur la route de l'école quand mon père m'a dit que Dan Brown, director of Atherton Racing, that just sent me an email explaining the situation. Of course, I was in. He's asking you to go and meet them in the in the UK, and for me, it was just unreal to get that opportunity from from Atherton Racing. And from from there, everything started. I've learned to speak English with them because I was 14 years old and I couldn't speak any English the first time I went to the UK. Donc. Uh... À ce moment-là, on s'est dit, waouh, il ils ont quand même détecté quelque chose chez lui. Et alors après, toutes les courses qu'il a fait, qui ont suivi, il a montré quand même toujours de quoi il était capable. Et les résultats ont suivi. Parce que, bon, vu son jeune âge, il a quand même dû faire une croix sur beaucoup de choses. Et alors, il a choisi l'entraînement, euh, qui était quand même très difficile. Et alors, euh, grâce à ça, on a vu qu'il s'est vraiment battu pour vivre de sa passion. Voilà, aujourd'hui, je, je pense que je ne sais plus rien d'apprendre du tout, sauf de temps en temps donner un petit conseil, mais c'est plus des, des, petites, euh, des petites choses, qui, des petits détails qui peuvent encore te faire évoluer. Mais sinon, euh, je pense qu'avec Atherton Racing, tu as appris, euh, je crois, et ça, moi, je ne je l'oublierai pas non plus, parce que c'est enfin, des gens qu'on a qu'on estimait et qu'on estime toujours aujourd'hui, on, on les en remercie. Et après, avec GT, avec, euh, avec Marc, hein, Marc Morrison, euh, lui, il avait tellement une grande, grande expérience. Euh, et expérience non seulement avec GT, mais au niveau euh, compétition, que encore aujourd'hui, je pense qu'il t'apprend beaucoup de choses, euh, ainsi que tout, tout le staff, bien sûr, qui t'entoure. Euh, quand tu es en déplacement euh, sur les compétitions internationales. Donc voilà, il y, y a beaucoup de gens, je crois, qu'on peut remercier. Moi, je n'ai fait que te donner les premiers conseils et toi, tu as fait tout le reste. Voilà. Now it's been six years since I first started my first EWS and I'm only 21 years old and just, it just, it's just unreal, really. I sometimes just can't believe it that, you know, it's been already like six years in the Mace family like 
it's not only a sport, it's a huge passion. C'est certain que voir Martin comme ça ou dans, dans les meilleurs, ça fait ben, d'abord euh, super plaisir, on est très fiers. Et puis euh, voilà, il y a encore des jours où, où, où on n'y croit pas, quoi. On, on a parfois encore des doutes en se disant euh, c'est pas possible. Et ben, voilà, c'est un peu un rêve que qui fait vivre à toute la famille finalement puisque euh... yeah I'm, I feel I feel lucky to be part of this family I wouldn't be as uh, competitive without them that's for sure yeah. if it comes to training you know he, it's important for Martin to keep it real not go too far in the gym not go too far on boring road rides but keep having fun ride with your mates and keep training real you know ride your bike because you love it and he's pretty good at that you know, if you ride every day, you're going to get to a point where you just don't want to get on your bike anymore. You know, all those sports I, go, I do besides biking is a good, good thing for me and a good motivation every day to do, uh, you know, different things. You know, it's a big thing, the first hour of the season, the first race of the season, it's a, you know, you've been training for a long time, so you just want to perform and uh, go fast. I was happy, I finished, um, I finished second, I felt good. Unfortunately, 
A week after in Colombia, I dislocated my shoulder. It wasn't really what I wanted to happen, obviously. But, you know, it's part of the job and unfortunately you need to accept it. GT has never put Martin in a certain direction. We give him full freedom of what he wants to do, whether that's enduro or downhill. It's great that he comes to Fort William. He's done well there before, he got hurt there before, but he's coming back this year and he wants to do a few more. So uh, we're more than happy to support him in downhill as well. We have a feeling he might do pretty good. We have a new bike, he's very excited to ride. Uh, fastest bike he's ever ridden, he said. So let's see where that takes him at the downhill. There's always a few places that you want to do well at. Whistler is one of them. He's been there. He's been close there a few times. I'm looking forward for uh, for a good race for redemption in Whistler, and uh, hopefully get a good race. And uh, you know, the win will be a, a dream. Keep up, he's 21, what is it? Five, six years now? And he got so close so many times and this is the one, we got it. For me, Whistler is the best Enduro World Series to win. It's awesome. When I was on top of uh, top of the world, I was like, I'm not gonna hold back, I'm just gonna go for it, which is why I did. And dude, it just, just feels amazing to, to finally get that win, you know, I won two years ago in 2016 in Finale. You know, that was a long time ago and uh, just being able to put it up here uh, at Frankfurt in Whistler, for sure the race to win on top of my list. With several second place finishes lingering in the past, Martin would finally take his win at the coveted Enduro World Series Whistler. But this would only be the beginning of something special. Weeks later, Martin would win his career first UCI Downhill Mountain Bike World Cup at Le Brest, France elevating him to a prestigious group of athletes to claim gold in multiple disciplines. With a tremendous amount of momentum from the previous wins, there would be an opportunity at the World Championships to be remembered as one of the greatest mountain bikers of all time. One race, one run. With a close second place finish, Martin missed his goal of being on the top step. However, he would quickly realize the weight of what he had just accomplished. I think he's still 21, so as a rider, he's like probably right now the best mountain biker in the world. The stuff he's done with the Downer World Cup, Enduro. Been three years on the team with Martin now, so I um, got to know him pretty good, and um, he's probably the easiest teammate I've had for over the years. So we have a good time, and it seems to go both ways. If you're having a good time, you ride well as well, so it's nice. Unfortunately, it's been a few seasons that I can't finish every race. And you know, that's really something that I really want to work on in the future. You know, it's to make, you know, the, the full season, to finish all the races uh, of the season and, uh, you know, 
that you know almost the only way you can be world champ. So it's uh, a huge goal for me in the future as well. Is uh, to be you know the world champ and uh, yeah, kind of make history.